Hey everybody, it's June 13th and you're here at the Chaos Weekly Community Call. We've just been discussing cookies and pies and now I'm like really excited for this meeting to be done so I can go chow down in my kitchen, like dig some cookies out somewhere um, or else go visit Matt because apparently he has cookies all the time in his house, fresh baked from his hands. I don't understand. I don't, I don't, yeah, I mean, it's awesome. Uh, there we go. I'm going to share my screen. If you have not told us what your favorite dessert is, please feel free to do that. Um, because we really like to talk about this stuff. We've just spent 10 minutes talking about it. So we'll continue if we have time at the end. That's fine. Um, first off, let's talk about this not so surprise announcement. If you have seen um, this is actually a really exciting day for chaos today. We have good things on the agenda. Um, if you've not seen our blog or our LinkedIn post or the post in Slack or Twitter or Mastodon, um, guess what? Don Foster, Dr. Don Foster will be our new director of data science, which is huge for us, huge for us. Um, Don is an amazing piece of chaos already. Um, she has contributed so much to our project, both in terms of um, offering her insight and experience. She's on the board. She leads the OSPA working group, um, led the common working group forever. Um, she's just a fantastic um, addition to our community. And now we get to have her here full time all the time. So I am selfishly very excited to be able to work with Dawn um, a little more. So um, yes, it is starting in August 2023, we should mention. Um, Matt, do you want to talk a little bit about like what that means for chaos in terms of this kind of new brave new world we're, we're going into with data science? Sure. So I think for a long time, a lot of you know, we've been developing metrics and software, but we've been pretty agnostic as to how we speak about metrics kind of publicly, you know, whether it's in OSPOs or university OSPOs or scientific software communities or just with organizations in general. Um, and it, by you know, really focusing on on data science, I think we're going to be able to to kind of ask more pointed questions from the chaos project and be able to answer and provide insight. So we're going to think this role is going to really help us be less agnostic and a little, you know, less hands yeah. off on I, how we understand metrics in practice. I I think it also addresses some of the some of the concerns or frustrations that OSPO's expressed about now I have all this data what do I do with it so having a data science role kind of lets us formalize how to make sense of it so we can be responsive to OSPO's that want things and then we can help them have them and I just want to add too um that this is not just for corporate OSPO's but Don's going to help I suppose in any context, um, specifically the three that we have going right now, which is scientific software community, the university OSPOs, and um, of course, then the corporate OSPOs. So we are super, super, super excited to have Don joining us full time in August to talk about um, you know all of these things and to really work with these groups on, on taking our metrics to the next level, really, just like Matt and, and Sean said. So. Does anybody have questions or, or comments or anything else they want to add to that? Don said she was going to try to make it if she could, but she was not able to, I don't think so. I guess just a, like a functional question. Um, given that this is a new role for the project, um, I'm just curious how much I guess that's really a question for Don, but I mean, we're thinking about before she's here, like how much her sort of roadmap and agenda is going to be available to the community in terms of like, if there's like a, just assuming the case where there's probably going to be a lot of demand for something like this. And I'm just kind of curious how she's going to sift through and prioritize things. And I'm assuming she'll, she'll determine how best to do that, but it might be awesome to see like kind of her project plan um, and what she plans to do or what the, questions she's taking on in support of which types of cases, types of organizations. Um, and I, I don't know how transparent she's planning to be with that sort of thing with the community. I was just kind of curious if you have any thoughts as a team um, or expectations that were set as part of the definition of the role. 
Um, so to the, in terms of transparency, I think at least my approach would be to kind of err on the side of being more transparent because this is meant, this is a community role. So this is a, a chaos community role. Um, this is intended to support work with Augur, intended to support work with Grimoire Lab, <laughs> intended to support work across those, uh, the different working, you know, the context working groups we have now. Um, but how, so, so to maybe part of your answer, but to how to prioritize and sift through that, I don't, I don't have a good answer for that. And I think Dawn could speak better to that. Well, she'll, she'll determine what makes sense for her, but I just, I'm just really excited. And I want to, one of those things where like, I want to make sure that we're also using her time well as a, as a mm -hmm. community. Um, yep. And so if she can tell us how, what she's doing and when she's planning to do it, then that can also help to like tamper back the over expectation or eagerness to just pile more things on her. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Look at this. Take a look at this, would you? <laughs> what does this mean? <laughs> um, so no, I, I think that's important. Um, this, you know, as we were writing this up, this, this is um, available through support from the Sloan Foundation. Um, and as we were, you know, kind of writing this up, this is not intended to be a consulting role, you know, where we, the chaos provide, chaos project provides consulting services. Um, but really meant to be a, a community support role. So I would suspect most of the questions that um, are being talked about are the ones that are being talked about in the working groups, or they're being talked about here in these meetings, you know what I mean, or on the Slack channels. Um, I actually have a question. I don't know if we've talked about this, but will there be a separate data science working group, do you think, or? Possible. Okay. Yes, TBD. Yeah. yeah. Probably up to Dawn. Yeah. It seemed like Sophia was interested. <laughs> yeah. It's like in general. Oh, I've got questions. <laughs> I mean, it, it would make a lot of sense, right? I mean, because I think there are a lot of organizations, whether they're for-profit or not-for-profit or you know, funding foundations or whomever it might be that relies on open source as, as part of whatever the work it is that they do. I think a lot of people, try, to your point, Sophia, a lot of people have questions that data science can help answer. So I, it would make a lot of sense to me to have not just like one person, i.e. Don, kind of be that person, but a, a working group who could think through those complexities and provide guidance and provide insight. That makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, and just for, I think many of you are on that call, but in the OSPO working group, I think early on, someone asked the question of how many OSPOs have data scientists and all of us kind of had partials <laughs> in a way that I think in support of OSPO, it can be it. like, I, I just, I imagine there's gonna be a lot of interest to work with on. Um, and so it's more just to appropriately know how to engage without just, again, throwing it at her. <laughs> um, but I, I like the idea of a working group, but I guess I'll wait to hear how she's she's thinking about the role and how to engage with the community. Wouldn't the, uh, wouldn't the metrics models working group be the uh, kind of the natural place for her to land? Isn't that the work that they're doing? I, I think, you know, I don't think Dawn's on this call, but I, one of the things I think is important is that um, she can define kind of how it works. And, and some of the things that her and I have discussed is there are existing Grimoire Lab dashboards that that provide some of these things that are metric models that are pe people are looking for. Um, there's Compass and there's 8Knot. And so I think possibly one thing that Dawn may do is because she's done so much development for VMware, um, use the different data collection tools we have to generate candidate like Jupyter Notebooks, and then um, provide use that as kind of a pathway to enabling those those metric models to, or or insights that OSPOs want to be incorporated into the tools using the code that she generates, and perhaps to build a community of people who do something like that. But I don't want to speak for Don. I think I think it's important. She has sort of some full leverage or latitude to j define the role, however it evolves. I do. I will say, Kevin, I like that that idea because um, it's just something to talk about. And yes, to your point, Sean, like it can evolve. But um, 
as the different context working groups, you know, we've set those up so folks can kind of speak freely about what they would like to see and what they would like to do with respect to metrics in their organization without worrying about, you know, some of the underlying details that are involved in the chaos project. And the metrics model working group really has been a place where we talk about bringing those, um, you know, those ideas forward and thinking about how they're connected with software um, and how we talk through the models. So I think that's where you're going with that, Kevin, and I like it. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, but, but also, I also uh, agree with what everything that's been said about uh, uh, Dawn kind of figuring out where she best fits and, and defining the, helping to define the role, so. And I also think too that maybe her role will be more about not necessarily the what, but the the why and the what does it mean too, which um, metrics models doesn't. I mean, they touch on, but as far as like interpreting the data and like trends and things like that, it doesn't really go that far. It kind of stops after defining the model. So um, it may be, you know, she might be the bridge to like to kind of pull everything together in one yes. place. Yep. How does the model have, for example, predictability, or does it have an influence on something else? You know, when we see trends in a particular model, is that does that tell us a story that we didn't otherwise know about? Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. So yeah, Don, when you watch this recording, if you watch it, um, we're all super excited for you. <laughs> You're gonna solve all the problems. And we have lots of world. ideas for you. <laughs> So yay. Is that, um, do we, Matt, do you know if it's like August 1st or is it just sometime in August? Do we know? Sometime in August. Okay. Perfect. From, from talking to Don, I think, I think um, we're starting the paperwork because uh, it's the, the cash is flowing through my university and she's going to start sometime, I think in late August, she, you know, oh. she may not like have a, she may have like a ramp up but she's going to take some time off. I think she's with VMware through some time in July and she's going to take some time off or some time with low, um, you know, a slow start. And then by the end of August, I think be full bore is, is what I understand from the conversations she and I have had. Okay, cool. Awesome. Well, for everyone else, stay tuned to see how that unfolds and yeah, how we decide to set that up for community participation. Uh, any other final comments about data science and chaos and Don? Okay. I I oh, see yeah. more I see more student interns or uh, Google Summer of Code coming after data science now. Yeah, that's definitely something to think about for next year's uh, yeah. talk. If we didn't have enough. Um, applicants before. <laughs> this is like a whole other, whole other world. Okay. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and move on. Just want to remind everybody yet again, um, our very first chaos con in Africa is happening tomorrow. So hooray, hooray, the organizing committee has done an absolutely outstanding job in organizing this. I mean, it's a full day of a lot of stuff going on. I am so excited for it. Um, there's, you know, been design elements, there's been all kinds of scheduling and outreach and, um, you know, going through the, the abstracts and choosing, which, I mean, just logistically has been really challenging. And so I'm just so proud of every single person on this list and all of the work that they've done. So huge shout out to this whole team here. Um, does anybody, is there anybody on the call that knows, maybe Busayo, oh, I don't want to put you on the spot. But do you have any idea of like what we're at as far as registrations go? I'm just curious. Um, if you don't know, that's totally fine. Okay. Um, do you mean registrations for entry to events? Yes. Okay. Um, so we start that by 10 a.m. and we have people that have volunteered to do the registration. So you just come here come to them, you show them your order number, they try and confirm it. Then once they do that, they give you your tag, your attendee tag, and you can gain entrance into the venue. 
Oh, oh, I just meant, do you know how many folks we have registered? Oh, okay. Uh, I think we have about over 100. We have over 100 people that registered. So I think we're aiming for 100 more twins. Fantastic. Super exciting. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Visayo. Um, again, just an outstanding job. I cannot wait to see what comes of this. Um, but for those who don't know, Justin Flory, who has been a chaotic for a while, he's also on our um, DEI audit team. Justin is giving one of the keynotes, and Anita I Human is giving the other keynote. Um, so, you know, just again, logistically, it's been a challenge to get everybody there. So, super, super excited. If we do want to, if you're uh, attending virtually, um, you can just go to our chaos tube here on YouTube. Um, and then there'll be a live stream here. So, yeah. I don't think I have a specific link yet, but I'll be happy to post that in Slack if they if there is a direct link. I assume that won't be happening until the live stream starts and then we'll have the link. That's probably not. Yeah. yeah. Um, any questions about uh, ChaosCon Africa? Sean is also giving a talk. Yeah. Sean is also giving a talk. He is. <laughs> So is Enoch and several others. Yeah, it's a it's a pre-recorded talk for me, obviously, so that we don't have any internet problems. Gotcha. Are you doing a demo, Sean? Y yeah, a slight demo, but um, I'm going to focus on something that's more engaging than watching a software demo. Cool. It's going to be a whole video production. Nice. Love it. I can't wait. I'm going to try to uh, attend virtually if I can get up that early. <laughs> I don't know if I no. can, but I'll try. <laughs> well, since I got back from Japan, I'd be there up really early or really late. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> Still have no idea like what, what time it is for you. I get it. <laughs> it takes no. a while. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other questions, comments about ChaosCon Africa? Okay, um, the next one is just a quick um, announcement, I guess, because I don't think I've announced this yet. There's a next um, Badger orientation if you're interested in becoming a DEI event Badger. Um, you can reach out to me, I can send you a calendar invite, or you can just show up on the Chaos channel at June 27th at 2 o'clock right after this meeting. It'll happen in a couple weeks right after this meeting that you're in now. So not today, but in a couple weeks. Did I see the badging calculator was broken today? Uh, it was on one issue, but on the others it was fine. So I think it's something going on with that issue. I'm not sure why. Okay, I thought I saw that kind of cross the. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. It's a I'm, percentage, and I'm like, oh, that's not very good. <laughs> and then I like pulled out my actual calculator, and I'm like, no, that is not correct. Um, and I did tag poor Enoch in it, but I know Enoch is on his way to Casca okay. um, Africa, and he's giving a talk there. So can you still um, issue the badge? without I don't think it can. I think it'll do it uh, if it if I do it automatically it'll just give that low okay one and I don't think you can force it okay I was what that was it I was wondering if you could force it yeah I don't think so I don't okay think um so we'll we'll troubleshoot that when we can but okay. um, yeah. anybody have questions about this or not sure what that is I'm happy to give a little more context around that Okay. Um, and I put this on here. What else would we like to talk about? So um, I'm guessing this was either Matt or Sean that put that on there. Yeah, I just um, I have a few quick updates. Um, Enoch and the team and I went through a couple of weeks ago, just the full design for the site and it's looking really good. Um, pretty, really good progress on that. And Enoch and I have been working pretty closely on the automation and the very technical low level detail we had originally decided to have chaos africa pull um just basically post applications and auger would pull them but we think it would be better if auger had an api that they could just call every time someone applied so um we went about designing that in its entirety last night and one of the auger developers is building that today and tomorrow so 
we'll have that ready to test for the next uh, or to demonstrate for the next meeting. Um, there's also some report design work that I owe the team and some work. This is basically Enoch and I worked out the workflow work that was our task after the last main meeting for that group. And I have to work out the, um, the I have the report design I have to put into a document and I haven't, haven't done that yet because I was busy working out the details of the flow and also had, I don't remember what happened last week, but I think I was still really heavily in Japan time. Uh, oh, and I had an internet outage at a very bad time again. So I was up all night one night. So um, yeah, not that anybody really cares about my internet, but that's that. I that's care about your internet, Sean. I care very yeah. much. I do too. I really care. <laughs> I, have a, I have a secondary, I'm actually getting a secondary service installed in a week and a half. So like I'll have two ISPs in my house. I used to live in a place like that too, where we paid double because one would be out, the other was like a backup. So yeah. Yeah. So I mean, that. I'm I'm gonna build my university for the backup, but yeah. I feel that vibe. Um, for those who aren't sure about what we're talking about, um, this is what we're talking about. And it was on the GitHub blog. This is the project badging, um, kind of like the the uh, big sibling to event badging. Um, and we are working with the all in project and GitHub on this. So um, if you're interested in like kind of learning about what it is, if you don't know, and you want to see a quick um, summary of it, this is uh, it's all right here in that blog post. Yeah, I've got I some. Oh, go ahead. I think the most significant difference, if you're familiar with event badging, is that we really need we determined that it for this to be tractable and sustainable, we would have to automate a significant part of it. And so the design is is really focused on how to get a valid assessment of a project's DEI status and, and um, badge level, but to also do as much with automation as we can, because we think, and I think that's is right, the scale of project badging is exponentially larger than the scale of event badging. Yeah, and... Um... Other key differences, you know, event one and done, and then the next event they can just fill out another application. Whereas projects are, you know, ongoing, so it's you know we have to have some kind of expiration date and you know request to reapply, and then also it's kind of it's a little bit harder to define a project. Like, is it a repo? Is it an org? Like, what is it? So um, there are a lot of differences between projects and events. Whereas events are pretty simple, um, you know, they're pretty. Pretty black and white, pretty straightforward, and projects are a little more uh, amorphous, I guess. So, did, am I recalling correctly? We did decide to badge at the repo level for now. I believe so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So if it's an org, they have to do the repos. Yeah. Okay. But that was a conversation that we had to have, and we'll be part of the pilot to see, you know, if that's doable, if that works, if it's, you know, what we want. <clears throat> so yeah. yeah, we could always go back to the org, but right now I think the design is focused on repo level badging. Yeah. Um, so this has been in the works for a really long time. <laughs> lots and lots and lots of conversations about how it's going to work. And, and of course, then trying to actually make it work. So um, we're super excited that it's actually moving forward. And we have had um, quite a few responses to that blog post once GitHub um, posted that because we do, we are asking for um, folks who want to in, include their projects on as part of the pilot. So there's a place where they can participate. Or we're also asking folks um, opening it up, you know, whoever wants to help us develop these metrics and figure out what's going to be in each level. Um, so you may see some new faces in our DEI working group as well. So that's where we're kind of guiding people towards. So have we, uh, have we looked at running chaos through this project badging process yet? I would we have discussed it, but not a bad idea. <laughs> so as a test. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and maybe to maybe to make sure we're uh, we're on board with it as well. So yeah, it'll be it'll be curious because when we did the so Essentially, this badging initiative revolves around a file we're asking folks to put in their repos called DEI.MD, similar to like a code of conduct.MD or licensing, whatever. Um, this DEI.MD file will have um, four metrics, how the project attends to four different metrics. 
And the template that we gave them was based on chaos and kind of how we do things. So we'll have to figure out how our DEI.MT, like it might get flagged as like a, as a um, bogus one because the like our DEI.MD file will be very close to the template <laughs> because we used us as a template, if that makes sense. So we'll have to figure that out, I guess, if we run it through the automation and it does not go through, that would probably be why I would imagine. Um, but we can certainly work that out. Any other questions, comments about project badging? Does the, does the DEI.MD file, does that go in at the org level or do we have to pick a repo for that we asked them to give us a link to it it's in a one repo so we okay. we will recommend like put it in a community repo or something you know like governance or something like that okay. um, but we will ask them for a link to it okay so if, if we're doing this ourselves we'll probably put it in our community repo correct i would say it's probably the best so, way. so then that like if we do that then that suggests that we're asking for a badge at the project level and I was just looking at the DEI.MD file, and it says, you know, we're, this is about project, not just a repository. So I'm just like when I when I when we are asking whether this is at an org level or a repo level, and then I start thinking about a project. Like we have three different things here, and. If we ask for the DEI.MD file to be put in, say, a community repo, to me that implies it's for the entire org. Or if we ask them to put it in a .github folder at that top level, that's for the entire org. So it's not just a repo. And I know we've talked about this. I feel like we've talked about this many times. Yeah. But but you see what I'm saying? Like we have we have repo, org, and project. Right. We call it project badging, which to me implies that it's for the entirety of things. We and so the, 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 the DEI.MD DEI file just sits. It that's really all that we're badging. So it's it's like how does a project attend to these things? Right. So to me, that is at the org level. It's for the entirety of the project. And so then the, the next question would be, Sean, like when you are like pointing out certain things, like maybe there are specific things we point at to give reports, mm -hmm. but really the DEI.MD file, I do believe is for the project slash org. Yeah, I know we I know we talked about it, and at some point there was a design decision to do the DEI file in the pilot at the repository level. I don't think it's problematic to shift that. It it's just a slight change in in the API, but it does change. It creates uh, three different places where uh, the Chaos Africa team may have to scan for that DEI.MD file. So if it's um, in a community repo, that would be one place. If it's in a, if it's at the org level, like a shared file across the repos, that's another place. And then if it's in each repo, that's a third place. So I, I think we decided to pilot at the repo level, but, but moving on to the org level wouldn't be a problem. And if we wanna just say the org, like org level and specify where that files go, file goes, I think we can still make that design change at this time 